This is one of those cybersecurity specializations that not many people know it even exists. Even I didn't know it exists up until I worked in consulting. And I say underrated because this is the specialization that will provide the most work-life balance. And this specialization will potentially fast track your career into becoming a senior manager or even a chief information security officer. The specialization is cybersecurity audit. Now, what do we do? what do we audit as cybersecurity professionals? Aren't we supposed to just be stopping hackers all the time or just trying to do penetration testing or hacking into some organizations or even doing cyber forensics? In this video, I'll explain to you what the day-to-day -day look like for a cybersecurity auditor, what do we do, and I'll share with you some of my stories as an auditor. I'll also share with you the certification and the type of training that you need to become a cybersecurity auditor. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I was managing a team of cybersecurity forensic investigator and cybersecurity incident responders, and then I moved to become a cybersecurity consultant. Um, I didn't become a full-time cybersecurity auditor, but as a consultant, I was asked to perform some auditing activities, and that's when I got exposed to the world of cybersecurity audit. So I'll give you an example of what I did. So one of my projects was with one of a big one of the big banks here in Australia. I was asked to do a cybersecurity audit to check the bank's compliance against a framework we call ISO 27001. This is an information security framework. Just to make it simple for you, think that uh, my job was to make sure that the bank follows the best practice in cybersecurity. So ISO as a framework, just to make it very, very simple, this framework lays out a certain set of activities. If the bank does these activities, then they should be protected from hackers or it just give confidence to management that the bank is doing all their due diligence to protect the banks from hackers, essentially. So my job was to just audit and see did the bank follow the ISO 27000 recommendations or not. And if they didn't, my job was to find those gaps, those areas, where the bank didn't follow those recommendations uh, and I needed to provide recommendation and advice on how to fix those gaps and those issues. I also needed to create a report and present it to the board of directors for the bank. So it was a big job with a lot of visibility. So the project itself was fairly complex because this bank had thousands and thousands of employees. They also had uh, overseas branches. They had offshore data and I need to check their compliance against the entire framework. You can Google that framework and see what, what it's about. But I'll just give you an example example of one area of the framework is I needed to make sure that financial data was encrypted. Now this bank had hundreds of applications that had financial data in. So the first thing I needed to do is to just list down and just do a discovery activity to see where does financial data sit, which applications involve uh, financial data because some application are just sending SMS to clients or customers so that they didn't really have financial data. But some application they were dealing with actual financial data, the applications that were responsible for money transfer and the applications that where people check their bank accounts, all of this is considered financial data. So I had to narrow down to a certain applications that deal with financial data. Then I needed to understand how each application works, how did the data travel, where is the data stored, and is the data encrypted when it's traveling, is the data encrypted when it's stored, and when this data went for a backup, are the backups encrypted? So you can see the complexities and how it works. There is even some data stored offshore, so in different countries, and I needed to check the legislations and laws of these countries, what sort of encryption is applied. I also needed to see the length of the encryption key and what the bank wanted the encryption to be. Uh, so there was a lot of complexity, but to do that, I had to talk to so many departments. I had to talk to so many development teams. It gave me a really good exposure on how things actually work in the bank. Now, mind you, I wasn't hacking everything. I wasn't uh, reading lines of codes or anything. I was just talking to people, reading documentation, sometimes logging to these applications to understand how they work. And I was reporting that into my spreadsheet sheet and once I finished everything in the spreadsheet I had to create a PowerPoint presentation so it's a really really huge project but you can see the value I'm providing because it's one thing if the bank says that everything we do is secure but it's another if they bring someone as an independent auditor to provide that level of assurance to their senior management uh, because the IT team can say yep everything we do is secure but how would the chief information security officer know that everything is secure especially when we're talking about hundreds of thousands of employees and massive amounts of data so that's where the cybersecurity auditors come. So this is one type of auditing. I was considered an external auditor because I didn't work for the bank. There is a second type of auditor, people who can work at the bank. So there are employees within the bank. They are auditors. We call them internal auditors. Their job is to actually continually uh, audit the bank. For example, I talked about uh, if data was encrypted, financial data. So their job is to actually do that and report into it. Now you may ask, why didn't I just ask for those reports? Well, 
thing is they might miss some things and they might not be completely impartial. They, their, their opinion might be influenced by their managers. Maybe they don't want the bank to look bad. So my job is to complement what they do. So I need to find the gaps that they didn't find and I need to report on them. But an internal auditor's job is very, very important because they can fix so many problems that when I come as an external auditor, they've already fixed so many things. So my job is a little bit easier or the things that I find, I actually think that maybe they don't have expertise in. But these are two types of cybersecurity or the jobs that you can look into that can offer you a variety of options. Now, why do I say it's an underrated cybersecurity specialization? I think what most people don't know about cybersecurity audit is, first of all, the work-life balance. I think it's fairly obvious because if you're working with firewalls or if you're a cybersecurity investigator or if you're a penetration tester, it means you need to work after hours. You may need to work weekends. When things go bad, you need to be on your feet to fix them. But as a cybersecurity auditor, your job is really nine to five. There is no emergency per se. You're not going to get uh, something that needs to be audited at 3 a.m. But when I was working as a security analyst, I did get incidents that needed to be fixed at 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. So just something to think about if work-life balance is something that's important to you. The second and I think the most important point for cybersecurity audit is it actually can be your ticket to becoming a chief information security officer or a cybersecurity manager. The reason why is as a cybersecurity auditor, you actually get to see all the departments. You actually get to see that big picture. Like you get to see how firewall works, you get to see what the pen testers do, you get to see what the security operation center does. You get to see so many aspects. Like if you're just a firewall engineer, the only thing you know see and firewall, you don't get to really see the big picture. But an auditor usually sees so many things that they see the picture end to end. So that's a big advantage. The other advantage is you actually need to report on things to senior management. So you're up shoulder with senior managers, you speak the language of the business, you speak the language of the board, you can even sit on boards of directors, you can present to board of directors. So you get that type of exposure that if you are a cybersecurity engineer, you don't really get that type of exposure. So just something to think about if you're someone who aspires to lead a team or manage a big department or, or become a chief information security officer, spending some time as an auditor, I think can be invaluable and it will do wonders to your career. Now the certifications that will help you become a cyber security auditor in no particular order are ISACA certifications and ISC2 council. So from ISACA, I recommend you start with something like CISA, then follow it by CISM and CRIS. From ISC2, the CISSP is king. It's still the most recognized cybersecurity certification. And I think you can skip those certifications, but I highly recommend you do them because they'll give you that broad full picture. Like those certifications will not make you a firewall specialist or a pen tester, but they'll give you that end to end picture. So when you're auditing a program when you're looking at something like user management or encryption or firewalling you actually get that high level view with you know uh, a little bit of depth as well so you can do either or both I recommend you do both certifications and when it comes to experience the place I think the best place to gain experience as a cyber security auditor is the big four consulting firms so EY, PwC, KPMG and Deloitte in no particular order I think starting your career there is really, really good it will do wonders for you it will look amazing on your CV and it will open doors for you that you didn't even know existed before. So something to think about, just be mindful that the big four consulting firm, it can be a high stress environment, it can be a high pressure environment, it all really depends on your team leader. So it can be either high stress or low stress, depends. Some people get stressed out quickly, some people not so much. But I think if you're serious about a career in cybersecurity audit, these are the places to look for. The secondary places that I recommend are big banks or big financial institutions because they employ a lot of internal auditors and they have so much audit and so much compliance that they need to do. Mindful that the banks will usually love to see that you spend some a year or two or spend some time in the big four consulting firms. So the banks love to recruit people who work at big four. So that can be a career plan for you. And if you're currently working in help desk or customer service or you're doing any IT job and you're just not sure how to break into cybersecurity audit or any cybersecurity specialization, I recommend you watch this video where I lay out a step-by-step -step plan that will help you to get out of help desk, get out of customer support, and perhaps move to something like cybersecurity audits.